glad to have everybody. There's our seats still up front here. If, there, if anybody don't have a seat, you can move up front. Don't be afraid. If we call you out, don't matter if you're sitting in the back or in the front. <laughs> it's good to have everybody out this morning on this fine Easter morning. I know it's raining outside, but it's still a wonderful, great, blessed day. Glad to have all the families that's come in today. I know a lot of people have family here today. I can't name off everybody, so I'm not even going to try. But it's good to have you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And I can say one thing, he's alive. He's alive. If you will, stand with me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's invite him in here amongst us. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this time that you've given us, Lord. And Father, we just ask that you would be with us in this house, Lord, as we seek your face this morning. Father, we pray that you'll have your way. Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, that you would have your way in this house this morning. Lord, we pray that you would be with us. be seated. You can be seated. It says tonight, uh, no service tonight. Can't give you time to be with your family. Just come in. So no service tonight. District service, April 30th at 7 o'clock p.m. in Jonesboro. April 30th at 7 o'clock p.m. We'll be having district service. And there will be a water baptism Next Saturday at 2 o'clock p.m., if you'd like to be baptized, get with me, Brother Shannon, or anybody, a member of the church, and we'll get your name put on the list, and we'll get you baptized. Praise God. That will also be in Jonesboro, 2 o'clock p.m., next Saturday. There is some samples in of carpet in the fellowship hall, those of you that are members. You need to take a look at them and vote on what you would like. And if any of them doesn't appeal to you, write that down. And we can also get some more samples. That's going to be said. If you don't like the ones that's back there, let them know. And we'll get some more samples. And I want to apologize for the pews being gone, but we had a church that come up that said they needed pews. They're a new church. They're getting started. They wanted them. Those things are hard to get rid of. God provided for them, and he provided for us, but we're making do with our chairs this morning, so we got new ones coming. It's just around the corner. New carpet. We got a lot of new stuff coming, so other than that, Brother Shannon, I, oh, oh, I better not forget that. Let's take up the offering this morning. Brother Brandon, will you and Brother Buddy take up the offering? Brother Buddy, will you say the blessing on this?
going to turn this service over to Brother Shannon to do anything that would be any different this morning. So. Well, good morning. It's good to see everyone. It's good to have my family here with me this morning. I'm going to ask, Donna, if you want to tell Granny stand up or she can stand up on her own, and I'm going to have my dad can stand up. This is my grandmother all the way back here in the back. They pastored here many years ago. It is an honor to have them with my dad. As you know, he pastored here. So third generation is here this morning. It's good to have them here with us today. Praise the Lord. It's good to have you here on this Easter Sunday. But more than anything, it's good to have the Holy Spirit here with us today. Amen. If you will stand, and we're going to go to the Lord and worship today. How many of you come to worship the Lord on this happy Easter morning? Praise the Lord. Come on, worship team. We have a couple missing. Not feeling well, so that's why. Bear with me. Stop. 
the light of the world. Jesus Messiah, the name above all names, will bless it, Redeemer, Emmanuel, to the rescue for sin. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah.
magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Amen. Thank you, Lord. take this coat off. I don't typically, and I don't think I can today. Too hot and achy. My dad, <coughs> I'm sure my grandfather did as well, they preached in a suit and tie. I don't think they sweat as much as I do or something, I tell you. The title of this message is The Clock is Still Ticking. Bear with me this morning. I typically do not have this many scriptures. But this morning, I am going to go through more scriptures than typical when I preach. But I'm going to take you through parts of the pre-crucifixion and then to the crucifixion and then to the burial and the resurrection. And in the end, typically we take this Sunday and it's all about Jesus, and it still is. But in the end, it's going to be all about you. It's going to be all about you. So last Sunday, Brother Matt and uh, my dad filled in for me, and they preached on Palm Sunday. And we know that through the Scripture, Palm Sunday, it was a glorious day. And, and they wanted, they were happy to see Jesus as he came strolling in on the donkey, and most of the people, they did not understand, they wanted him to be their king, but they didn't really understand what kind of king he would be, and they expected the Messiah to be a great political and military leader, and he would free them from the tyranny of the Roman Empire, and I'm going to lay this foundation before we get into the scripture, but we know that the kingdom of God, it was not of this world, but it is a spiritual kingdom that it's growing in the hearts in the men of people today. But as Jesus and his disciples, as they came near 
Jerusalem, they told of two of his disciples, he said, go into the nearby village and grab a donkey. You will find a donkey that's tied up. Untie it and bring the donkey to me. And I will be waiting here for the donkey. So as Jesus, as he rode into Jerusalem on the donkey, the crowds of people, they begin to spread out their coats and on the ground in front of him. I call that rolling out the red carpet is what G, what they done for the Lord. But some, they begin to wave palm branches in victory and signs of victory. And they begin to shout, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessing is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. So Jesus, he went on now to the temple. And once he got to the temple, we know he did not like what he saw. The mo- this was the most holy of places. And it had been turned into a marketplace. And the merchants, they were selling animals for the temple sacrifices. And the money changers, they were exchanging the pilgrims' money for special coins and they used in the temple. So many of these people, they were cheating the pilgrims who came to celebrate this Passover in Jerusalem. Because of his anger, Jesus, he turned over the seats of the merchants and the tables of the money changers and he scattered their coins across the floor. And he said he even told them, to leave, to get thee out of here. But it said that he made a whip out of some kind of cord, and he used it to drive all of the animals outside of the temple. It is written that Jesus said that my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you've made it a den of robbers. And it still is true today that his house of prayer is for all nations. It's not just for us today, but it is for all nations. So not everyone was happy to see Jesus on that day. They were not happy because Jesus, he was preaching in the temple every day. And the chief of priests and the elders of the temple, they became very, very angry with the Lord. They became upset at him. And and the chief priests, they had given permission for these merchants and the money changers to use the outer courtyard of the temple. But Jesus had driven them out at this time. So they were afraid. Why were they mad at the Lord? They was afraid that he was cracking down upon them. And the Roman Roman authorities knew that their power was coming to a halt. They were losing their power. They was losing their authority little by little. So going forward, now we know that the disciples, they were with Jesus during the time of the Passover. And once the Passover was over, Jesus and his disciples, they gathered into the garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. So as they entered into this garden, Jesus gave the disciples some very specific directions and instructions. Matt, will you go? My mouth has gotten dry. Matthew 26, if you want to turn in your Bibles, or you can follow on the screen, we find here in the book of Matthew where that they went into the garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Matthew 26, 36 through 46 says, Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane. Sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is ex- And he fell on his possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he cometh unto the disciples, and he findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me just one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he goes on to say in 42 that he went away again the second time. And he prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be. Do them asleep again, for their eyes have become very heavy. And he left them, and then he went again for the third time to pray, saying the same words. And then cometh he to his disciples, and saith unto them, Sleep on now. Take your rest, behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of the sinners. He said, Rise and let us going. Behold, he is 
I know that they're after me, so I want you just to watch my back. Will you watch my back while I... So he told him once again, he said, I'm going to... ...to the sinners. So skipping ahead now, we know that Jesus, he had been captured, and he was taken before the court. And we find that in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 57 through 64. Starting in verse 57, he said, And they had laid hold on Jesus, priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off into the high priest's palace, and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and the elders and all of the council, they sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the least came two false witnesses, and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose, and he said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witnesses against thee? But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. So here Jesus is now standing before the courts, and he's being falsely accused. He is standing here, and they're telling lies on him and, and false accusations against the Lord. So if you read the rest of the scripture, you will now know that Jesus is gone before the judges. He is on trial now. And during his trial, not was he just crucified on the cross, but they was angry towards the Lord. So while he was on, the, while he was on trial... They spit in his face and they slapped him and they tore his clothes even while he was in this trial. So then after the end of the trial, they decided that you are going to be crucified. We're going to crucify you. Well, during this time period, the crucifixion was the most heinous punishment that a person could receive. So now it has come time for them now to hand Jesus over. And go with me to Matthew chapter 27, verse 27 through 34. Matthew 27, 27 through 34. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common ball. Common hall, not a ball, it wasn't a ball. Took him into the common hall. And they gathered unto him the whole hand of soldiers. And they stripped him and put him on put him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed, and they smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him, and they took the robe off from him, and they put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by the name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to this place of Golgotha, that is to say a place of skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. So to tell you what the scripture was saying here, we know that Jesus, he was treated terrible. He it was awful what they'd done to the Lord. They placed this crown of thorns upon his head. It was not just any set of thorns, but theologians say that it, they were six inches long. These thorns was very long. So it wasn't just enough that they wanted to put the crown of thorns upon his head, but they smashed them down to where it pierced the very top of his head. He was in pain and he was in agony. So they drove a spike. Inside the Lord's hands, they stretched him out. As you can see on the cross behind me, he was stretched to the farthest points of his fingers could go, and they drove a spike through the middle of his hands. It wasn't a nail, but it was a railroad spike, if you know how big that is. Not only did they do that in his hands, they crisscrossed his legs, put his feet together, 
and they drove one spike through both feet, and Jesus hung there upon that old rugged cross. At this time, then they began to give him vinegar to drink. So here Jesus is now, he's hanging on the cross, pain and in agony. And if it wasn't enough punishment that they had already given him, as he was hanging there, those Roman soldiers, they pulled out a spear, and they began to push it through his side. And they pierced the Lord's side till blood became, it came running out of his body, and it was dripping down to the ground. It is that blood today that still serves and saves you and I this morning. It is the blood of the Lamb today that nay saves us from the awful place called hell. But as Jesus was hanging here on the cross, he spoke his very last words, which is found in the book of John, John 19 and 30. Here's what Jesus said right before he died. It said, when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. There's many different opinions about what Jesus meant when he said it is finished. In my personal opinion, I believe that there was two things that the Lord was referring to here when he said these words. One, I believe the Lord was saying that his time on earth, it was over. He had come and he had accomplished his ministry. He done what he come for, but now it was time for him to go back to the Father. The second thing being is that he was the ultimate sacrifice and there would never have to be another lamb, another gold or nothing else sacrificed for the atonements of our sins because he died on the cross for you and I today. With that shed blood, that sets you and I today from the bondage of sin. We don't have to go out and, and find an animal to, to, to pierce and to kill, to sanctify and to save us. The Bible says that there's no other way to the to heaven except for through me. You've got to be saved and bought by the blood of the Lamb in order to ever make it to heaven, church. And Jesus did that at the cross. So as Jesus was hanging on the cross, they were making fun of him. And they were saying, if you're truly the Messiah, then take yourself off of the cross. Could the Lord have done that? Absolutely he could have. But because he loved you and I so much, he was willing to hang on that cross and take the punishment for you and I. He did it for you and me. But as Mary, Jesus' mother, is, as he was hanging there on that old cross, I can see her now, just she was weeping and she was in tears and, and she was just mortified that anyone could do this to her son. But not only was she there, Satan was in the background just laughing. He was saying, I got him now, he's dead, he's gone, and I'm in control. But what Satan didn't know that three days later that Jesus would be right back because he arose from the grave and he's alive this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now as Jesus was hanging there in life, he was going from him. And we see in this scripture what happened next. In Matthew 27, verses 57 through 66. Matthew 27, verses 57 through 66. said, when the, when the eve was come, there came a rich man of, Aram, of Amer, Am Amthea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and he begged the body of Jesus. And then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and he laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hone out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and he departed. And now there was Mary Magdalene and the mother Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees, they came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said while he was yet alive after three days that I will rise again. Praise God, we know today that he did rise. But the scripture says that they commanded, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure till the third day, lest his disciples come by night 
and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so last occurred shall be worse than the first. So Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and they made the sepulcher sure, sealing it, sealing the stone and setting a watch. So we know after Jesus was crucified and died, these two men, Joseph of Amathea and Nicodemus, they went to Pontius Pilate and they begged for the Lord's body. And these two men, they removed his body from the cross. And the scripture tells us that they took his body to a tomb that was made for Joseph. He had made this tomb for his own self, but he was willing to let the Lord lay in there. So Joseph, he, they had prepared the body. They washed his body. And it says, and they wrapped it in white linen, folding his arms over his chest. And they closed his eyes and they kissed his cheek. And they placed a napkin over his face. I want you to remember that part specifically. They placed a napkin over his face. After his body was prepared for burial, the stone was then rolled in front of the tomb. Was it just rolled? The scripture doesn't say that it was just rolled. It says that it was sealed. It was sealed there. So now the soldiers, they were there and they was instructed to guard the tomb to make sure the disciples or the no one else came to steal the Lord's body. But look at what the book of John tells us happened next. In John, in John 20, I told you there was a bunch of scripture. In John 20, verses 1 through 8, John 20, 1 through 8, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher. And said the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple who Jesus loved. And saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. And Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple, and they come into the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and he came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in, he saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, went into the sepulcher, and he seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head was not lying with the linen clothes, but it was wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went all in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and he believed. So then we know that this was three days after Jesus had been placed into the tomb. They went to the tomb, and Mary Magdalene, she got there, and she noticed that the stone had been rolled away. And then she, gave, she became frightened because she thought that someone had stolen the Lord. So she ran, and she found the other disciples and Simon Peter, and they ran back to the tomb. But there was something about Jesus in the number three. If you look throughout the Bible, Jesus, he ministered on this earth for three and a half years. He referenced the number three in, in various scriptures, but it was on the third day that he rose from the tomb. So we know that there was something about the number three with the Lord. So going back to our text, Mary, she comes to the tomb first. And when she gets there and she sees that the stone was rolled away, it began to frighten her. And once again, she run, and, and she gets Peter and John, and they run together as fast as they could. And I can see them now because Mary, she was frightened. Some of you mothers have probably gotten a phone call about your children, and you rushed home as fast as you could get there. I know I probably would, but I can just imagine Mary, the mother of Jesus, as she had already witnessed the Lord. He was hanging on the cross, and she knew that he was placed in that tomb. But she went back there, and he was gone. I can imagine the fright and the fear that was inside of her. But the Bible says that, so we see that Peter, he arrived. And just as we expect, he went right in. And he also saw this linen clothes, they were lying there. But there was something unusual at that scene. Something that the scripture tells us that caught their eye, it was very interesting. The book of John tells us that the napkin which was placed over the face of Jesus, it wasn't just thrown to the side like the grave clothes, 
But the Bible tells us that the napkin was neatly folded and was placed to the side. Why is that so important today? Let me tell you, because a folded napkin means that I'm not finished. I'm here to tell you this morning, God is not finished with you yet. He is not finished with us yet. Jesus said, if I go away, I will come again. And where I go, I will prepare a place for you. So the Lord knew that he was not finished. So he wrapped this cloth and he folded it up. So the importance of that folded napkin that was found in the tomb, he said, I'm coming back. I'm not finished. And if you've read the back of the book, you know that the Lord is coming back. And I'm here to tell you this morning that he's coming back very, very soon. Very, very soon. But the Bible says that no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall return. But you go on over, and I believe it's in the uh, book of Leviticus, I think. It also says that he'll come as a thief in the night. He'll come as a robber. So what I'm telling you this morning, if God is not finished, the time is still clicking, and it may run out on you if you're not prepared. You need to be prepared for the, for the Lord's return today. Hallelujah. So I want to ask you this morning, are you ready? Are you ready? This is where the part comes in. It's not all about him, but it's about you, Lord. If you're not ready, I ask you today, what in the world are you waiting on? Why are you waiting? The time is ticking. Jesus said in John 3, 16, he said, for God sent his son into the world to condemn the world. He said, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't just do it for me, church, but he did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for my kids. He did it for your kids. He did it for my ancestors and your ancestors. That shed blood was for you and I so that we can escape an awful place called hell. But unfortunately, there will be many people that will find themselves in hell. You say, how can a, a just and a graceful Lord send somebody to hell? He didn't send you to hell. You sent your own self. You rejected him. When he came calling, you rejected him. You've had every opportunity to make things right and make heaven your home. But you may say that I, I've done too many bad things in my life and God, he won't forgive me. I've done this and I've done that and God won't forgive me. I've done gone too far. I'm telling to let here to tell you this morning, that is a straight lie from the pits of hell. God said, I died on that cross for you and I. He said, when I come to save this world, I cast your sins from the east to the west and they are forever gone. Jesus is pleading. And he's begging with you today, come, come, and escape this awful place called hell. I'm going to read you this little story this morning. Maybe you can relate to it, or maybe you can't. It says a guy had a dream, and he went to heaven. And say many clocks, saw many clocks. As is customary with these stories, St. Peter was attending the gate. And when asked if the clocks were for Peter, he replied that every person on earth has a clock here. And each time a person sins, the hand on their clock moves just a bit. The man said, where is my clock? Peter replied, it's in the office. Moses has been using it for a fan. Some of you will get that later. As we celebrate today, our risen Savior, once again, I want to ask you, have you made things right between you and the Lord? We're not promised our next breath. We're not promised the next hour. You can't be half in and half out. You're either serving the devil or you're serving the Lord. You may say that I'm not serving the devil. If you ain't been bought by the blood of the lamb, you are. If you ain't saved today, you're serving the devil. 
and you'll spend your time in hell. But Jesus went to that cross, and he was resurrected on the third day so that not none of us has to spend one day inside of hell. But you today have the opportunity to make things right. I want to tell you this morning, as I told you how they beat Jesus and how they, what they've done to him on the cross, every day that you go by, that you've not asked the Lord to save you, you are crucifying him just like they did on the cross. You are putting a crown of thorns on his head. You are sticking a spear through his side because you are not bought by the blood of the Lamb. You are continuing to crucify him when all he says is confess of your sins. Church, we're all sinners. Saved by the grace of God. Where would we be without that grace? You may be saying this morning that I can't live that life. Yes, you can. You can't afford not to. But there's a thing called grace. When you get down, get back up and dust yourself off. Because Jesus said, I'm here to pick you up. I'll take you by the hand and I'll walk with you and I'll talk with you. He said, I'll take care of you all the way. But you've got to call upon him and you've got to need him. And God help us today that we need the Lord. We need God today. Stand with me this morning. I want you to think about it. Come back, worship team. I want you to think about it today. Is the clock running out on you? Is the clock running out on you? If you don't know the Lord today, what better day than today to make things right with Him? We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised our next breath. You may say, I still have time. You don't know that. And neither do I. You're gambling with life. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to think about it this morning. If you left this world in the next few minutes, where would you spend eternity? Where would you spend eternity? Will it be heaven or will it be hell? We're all going to be judged one day. Every one of us. The Bible says every knee shall bow. So will he say, well done, thy good and faithful servant? Or will he say, depart from me, for I never knew you? Jesus died upon that cross. And he arose on the third day so that you so that you do not have to spend eternity in hell if you're here this morning I would beg you to make things right with him these altars are open these altars are open if you don't know the Lord will you make things right today all you got to say is, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. And I confess, Lord, today that I am a sinner. Lord, will you come into my life and cleanse me and make me whole? That's all you have to do. That you have to do it. I can't do it. I will open these altars if there's a one. Is there a one that you just don't know the Lord and you want to make things right? Is there a one? Is there a one? And ask the worship team to lead us in one worship song. And you think about that this morning. When you walk out of here if you have an accident. Where will you spend eternity? Just a few years ago, we had a gentleman right on this right side. Oh, I confess. Had a
chest of heart attack and passed oh, away. Not in here, he didn't know that that would be his last I day. Find my oh, rest yes, sir. And you don't even. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are and where you Before you do offer open communion. Well, during that prayer, I hope that you made things right with the Lord. <coughs> uh, Brother Gary, uh, Brother Matt, and Brother Buddy, would y'all come forward to help us with communion? And before we partake of communion, I am going to ask my dad if he would stand and if he would pray over this communion service.
probably shouldn't tell this, but I will right before having communion. Brother Gary, can you catch these up here? We were <coughs> I was gonna have I'll give them. We were gonna have communion. And uh I did not get the wafers in time. And <coughs> went to the store. Granny, you'll remember this. If she can hear me. And it was Sherry, you probably will too. You used to use crackers. You just break crackers out. So didn't get the the actual uh, sacraments in time. <coughs> so went to the store, got crackers, and after service, Mother said, you know those wasn't supposed to be salted. I said, well, we had salted crackers for communion today. Everybody got one. Everyone did get a cup of one of one, right? All right. Brother Gary did. Here. Um, okay. So we are going to go into our communion service this morning as we partake of the Lord's Supper. We do this in the reverence and the remembrance of Jesus' body. And it's in his remembrance of the sacrifice that he made. On the cross. So Luke 22, 19 and 20 says, And he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And you may partake of the bread. Then likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. You may partake of the cup. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You may stand this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here today. Hope you enjoy your Easter. We will not have service tonight so that we can spend time with our families. But if you will, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm going to ask Brother Johnny Barnes, Brother Johnny, if you'll close this service out in prayer this morning. <clears throat> 